In this video, we'll be considering how best to communicate school information to parents and carers of pupils who use EAL. First of all, let's consider who falls within that group. It's important to understand the variations within it, so we can plan the most effective ways of communicating, especially during school closures. First, it's important to note that not all the parents and carers of EAL pupils are speakers of other languages. In fact, for many, their first language is English. For example, this is Maita, a year one pupil categorised as EAL. Her dad, Varan, is from Spain. His home languages are Spanish and Basque, and his mum, Emma, is from England and her first language is English. In this video, we're going to focus on communicating with parents like Faran, whose first language is a language other than English. Amongst parents and carers like Faran, there will undoubtedly be a wide spectrum of countries, cultural norms, belief systems, and educational experiences represented. However, what they will all have in common is bi or multilingualism, i.e. access to more than one language, including English. Within this shared characteristic of multilingualism, there will again be a breadth of linguistic experiences and competencies. It is most obvious and seen as a priority for many schools to consider how to communicate effectively with parents who are new to English. But how much support is needed for parents who are beyond the initial stages of English language acquisition? And what is the best language to use to provide this? Knowing the parents and carers of your EAL pupils is vital in order to understand their individual linguistic profiles, including first languages as well as English and to adapt school communication methods and formats accordingly. Some aspects to consider are oracy. In which languages are the parents able to speak? Literacy. In which language are the parents able to read and write? Proficiency. To what level can spoken and written information be comprehended? And how competent and fluent are they when they speak and write to communicate? And finally, community. To what extent is there a first language community around the family to provide mutual translation, interpretation and discussion opportunities? So what methods of communication can be used with these families? Let's look first of all at communicating via the written form of English, which may include paper copies, emails, texts, WhatsApp messages and website posts. Let's consider each of these in turn. Some schools have made weekly arrangements for parents to physically visit the school site to collect printed work packs. This can be challenging in various ways during the current pandemic, not least because of social distancing but some families have no other option. This is because the current COVID-19 crisis has revealed considerable differences in terms of access to technology, mobile data, Wi-Fi, etc., which we need to be aware of, particularly when communicating with pupils from disadvantaged households. If technology is available, emails, texts, WhatsApp messages and the school website can be helpful ways to communicate so long as we ask ourselves the following questions. Are the communications easy to physically or virtually access? Are they easy to translate? Deciphering unfamiliar words and phrases from a printed document to type into a translation app can be quite a challenge. Parents tell us it's much easier to cut and paste from an email or text message or to select the appropriate language from the school website's translation tool. Have visuals been included to support communication of the key messages and not merely as decoration? Are parents able to see and read the same communications, for example, on the school website, so they can discuss them with same language peers on video or phone calls? 
The important thing with written communications is to consider issues of access and to be flexible when responding to these. Now let's consider the school website and other audiovisual methods of communication a bit more. The school website can act as an excellent information hub for all parents if organised well and populated with accessible language. Even families with limited internet access should be able to access the latest school information in a minimum of clicks. Visuals, audio and video clips can easily be added to school websites to support homeschool communication. However, it's essential to remember that these additions will only be enhancements if they convey meaning. Looking attractive is not enough. More and more schools are setting up YouTube channels or Facebook pages to reach their parents. Others are using Twitter as an accessible communication route, and some are using online learning platforms which are free during the pandemic, such as Class Dojo. With the COVID crisis, lots of people have learned to share screens when video conferencing on Skype or Zoom, for example. But as we've already flagged up, not every family will have been able to access the technology, data or Wi-Fi to do this. So we've looked at the methods of communicating information, but how can the actual content be made even more accessible for parents and carers of EAL pupils? Grading language is a very helpful strategy and encourages you to be concise, to focus on the key messages, to use shorter sentences, to leave out the fluff and phrase sentences using minimal words for maximum impact, to use imperatives. What is the reason for the communication and what do you want from parents? These are just the basics of grading language. To learn more, watch the Bell Foundation guidance video resource on grading language in the Support for Schools section. Formatting information should make it clearer for everyone. Look at the first version of this guidance for parents on how to support this maths homework in reception. Reflect on how comprehensible it is. Or not. Now let's look at the second version, which is formatted differently and in a way which could easily be adapted for different tasks to help parents to help their children. For example, there's a title showing the year group and curriculum subject with a symbol for maths. There is a subtitle with symbols for parents. The topic is identified and supported by another visual and colours, italics and numbers are all also used. We can summarise this formatting information in these three ways. Use standardised symbols, use numbers, bullets, colours and use familiar formats. In class, you probably use visuals to help understanding and you can obviously do the same when setting work for home learning. For example, if you're asking learners to identify musical instruments in a piece of music, include some pictures of musical instruments and possibly label them too. Pixabay is a great source of images which are free for commercial use and require no attribution. Nowadays, it's quick, easy and free to test whether the texts we write are readable and accessible. For example, Microsoft Word allows you to quickly see the reading level of your Word document or selection of text. Just type readability statistics in the help window and you will get instructions on how to get these every time you run a spelling and grammar check. You can also copy and paste your text onto an online readability checker and get instant results about the accessibility of your text. Readabilityformulas.com is an example of a free website that allows you to do this. Who needs translation and who can provide translation? Use information about your EAL family's linguistic profiles to identify need. 
Use a professional translator for confidential issues, but perhaps consider the multilingual skills of your colleagues and other parents if this is appropriate. Is it better to interpret orally or to translate in writing? Again, consider the EAL family's literacy skills in first language and keep an eye out for generic information already translated, for example, about COVID-19. Many school websites now have a translation button, which is wonderful. However, watch out for documents which you need to download, as this sometimes bypasses access to the translate button. Sometimes it's a more effective means of communication to make a short video or write a comprehensible short written piece in English than to translate a long document into another language. How can parents and carers of EAL pupils be supported to respond to school communications? Remember to give instructions. If you need confirmation that EAL parents have read some key information or you require a definite response from them about a particular issue, be very clear about what you'd like them to do. For example, tick the box, retweet on Twitter, email the school by this date, phone the teacher on this number and so on. Bear in mind that families of EAL pupils are individual and need to be treated individually. One size does not fit all, but the better you know each family and their linguistic profile, the more successful your communication with them will be. Holding the principles of inclusion and equity in mind as you plan school communications will promote effective homeschool relationships with your families of EAL pupils and have benefits overall too. So to summarise how to communicate clearly with our parents and carers of EAL children, use knowledge of families' linguistic profiles, choose the best method of written communication, ensure that content and response methods are clearly communicated, and optimise the use of audio and visual channels. It's worth pointing out that many of these ideas will remain useful once schools are open again, for example, for regular homework and ongoing communication with parents and families. For further CPD opportunities, the Bell Foundation also runs regular webinars. To sign up to upcoming webinars and to view recordings of previous webinars, please go to the Bell Foundation website and then EAL Programme Training Webinars. You may also be interested in signing up to one of the Bell Foundation online courses running in the coming months, which you can also sign up to on the website. Thank you once again and please keep up all the great work.